YouTube, what's up? JP here, wife Whitney. So today we're going to be doing the spark plugs on the Jaguar F Type R. We're going to do a DIY video for you guys so you guys can know how to do it. So let's get this video started. So we're going to start by removing these four bolts. There's a few on the other side. They just unscrew and then you pull up to pop them out. Like that. Put them in this little cubby there. That's not one. There you go. We'll set these down under the car for now. Alright. Get as much stuff out of the way as we can. So on this next part, we're going to go ahead and pop this cover up. It should pull straight up. There we go. All right. All right, so our coils, let's see if you guys can see that, make sure. There we go. So our coils and everything are going to be under this cover here. So we're going to need to gently remove as much stuff as we can. Don't be afraid to take things off. Um, we're going to take the oil cap off, get some of these lines out of the way to get this cover off, and then we can get down to the coils and the spark plugs. I can... Alright you guys, so on these coolant lines here, you need to push them in, and there's two tabs, one on each side. you got to push pressure in, squeeze those tabs, and then release. Um, they won't release if they're being pulled towards you so you need to push them towards the supercharger squeeze the tabs then remove and then they will leak a little bit of coolant but not too much all right on the passenger side the um, dust shield here is kind of in the way so you're gonna go ahead and pop this out and wiggle this pad out to get down to those clips Once you get that cover up, you can see your coils. One, two, three, four there. I'm going to go to the driver's side. On the driver's side, I'm just going to pop this clip down. It'll push out. And then same thing with this clip here. And then we'll get this cover off and it'll expose the coils there. So you guys can see on this green clip here, there is a lock right here. So if you push the green part towards the windshield of the car, there's actual cutout. Same thing on the, the bottom side, there's a cutout. So it can actually come through as a better view. So you see that little spot right there. So you wanna push those green tabs this way to get them off the lock and then you can pry it out. All right, you guys, so this is uh, this is your fuel line, so when you pop them off, just know you'll lose a little bit of gasoline. If you've started the car recently, it might be under a little bit of pressure, so you might just cover it with a rag when you separate the two. I got the car. <laughs> All right. So on the secondary, this one's really easy to get to. So there is a silver tab that you're going to pull up. Once you pull up, you just squeeze the two tabs and slide it off. So that one's really easy compared to that one. So you gotta remove your oil cap on this side and get the cover off of it. I like to put the oil cap back on so nothing falls down inside the motor while you're wiggling everything out. So on these, 
pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of gently release any clips you see. You get this foam pad, this dust shield, heat shield off of everything. So I got one fuel line out. Two fuel lines out. So now this cover will slowly got to finesse it out, but it'll slowly come out. Just watch your lines, make sure you're not breaking anything. And put your hand down and pull away from the engine. It helps kind of release the molded pad. There it goes. That side's off. So on that one, you guys, you saw, I kind of rotated it this way and it kind of helped release everything. So now that's out of the way. There lies our coil packs. There's coil one, two, three, and four. All right, you guys. So on the coils, you'll have a little gray tab on each wire. You want to get yourself a little pick or a flat screwdriver, and you're just gonna very gently pull them back towards, on this passenger side, it's gonna be towards the windshield until you hear them click once. And then that little gray tab is also going to be your release button. So after you get them back. You make everything look so easy. Oh, there it goes. There's one. So you're gonna do that on all eight coil packs. All right. Uh, let's see if I can get this to uh, show you guys here. So once the clip is unplugged, you see this little gray clip. That is what you're going to push down on, and then you're going to. I don't have enough hands. Okay. So I'll get you guys down in there so you can see. You're gonna push down on that gray tab very gently. That is your releasing lock. And then push back on the wire as a whole. Unplug from the coil. This one, because I'm trying to do the camera and everything at once, is not being friendly, so hold on. There it goes, just like that, guys. So. Alright you guys, so we're going to remove the four bolts on each side of the coil packs. They are a Torx bit uh, T30. So um, this is going to be the difficult part. Uh, you'll need to find me. I have these little, these little guys. I'm going to put a regular wrench on them probably. It's, there's not a lot of room to work in there. You can get these Harbor Freight. This is Hercules brand. Um, also, everyone else sells them as well. Alright you guys, so this is actually a perfect tool for this job. It's got a slight bend, it's magnetic, it holds, and it gets right down to those bolts. Uh, not sure, Hex Ratchet 8, I guess is the part number from Matco. Four bolts out, you're gonna pop your coils out. kind of gently articulate them so you can get them out like this one I had to turn this way what I normally do is I put my finger under here and lift and then as soon as I can get under here I lift so I can pull with two hands I like to put them in order so we got one two and three for this side Let me get this last one out for you guys see down in there there's our spark plug holes these are going to be 14 millimeter spark plugs we 
is a, is a 14 millimeter socket. Do this to the whole side, switch sides. All right, on the second spark plug, I have my socket in there. Then I have about a, I don't know, two inch extension to get it out of the hole. Then I'm gonna use a swivel and another four inch extension. That should help you guys with getting to this. We're learning as we're going. Even easier way, you guys. So, go under this pipe. And this is for the second spark plug in. You get a nice straight shot, pretty much. Uh, for this last one, uh, I'll show you guys what I end up doing, because it's great. So, there's your last one. So, spark plug socket, short extension to get down in the hole. Then I got this wobbly, you see it's rounded at the ends, it's a wobbly extension. Gives you just enough angle to get these out really easy. So again, I think they sell these at Harbor Freight as well. I mean, if you got one in town, um, this is Snap-ons, Matco has them. But this works perfectly for getting some of those weird angles that you need leverage. Okay, for colder spark plugs if you're running boost on the jaguar f type it's for the b8 you're going to use ngk's laser uridiums ilk ar8 h6 96024s and you want them set at a 0 0.036 we'll go old school get our little odd zone gapper Again, 0 0.036 is the gap, which these are currently gapped extremely small. So there's a gap tool right inside here. Right. 0 0.030. There is 0 0.30, 0. 035, 0 0.036 should be, I don't know if you can see that good or not, let's see, there you go, you want to make sure there's no damage to anything, electrode or anything. So here's our old sparks, here's our new. And verify these are equal in length. We, in the last video, we, or last clip, we went ahead and set our gap. We just wanna double, double check because it's so hard to get to. We wanted to double check, make sure they didn't get cracked in shipping. Make sure this porcelain in here didn't get cracked during the adjustment. All that kind of stuff. These look good, so we're gonna start putting in the new spark plugs, so. Alright, so make sure you torque your um, spark plugs according to Jag Madness. Um, I'm not buying my computer, so I just pulled it up online. But uh, basically, 11, uh, sorry, uh, cast iron is 8, 10, uh, 0.8 to 18. Aluminum, which this is aluminum heads, aluminum block, is going to be uh, 10.8 to 14.5. So we're going to set it for, go ahead and set it for 14 foot pounds. So I'm actually using my inch pound click torque wrench um, because it's a lot more sensitive and small. So just like anything, one foot pound is equal to 12 inch pounds. So you're just going to take the 14 times 12, which is 168. As you can see here, we're at 168. So go ahead and torque this one down.
Boom. Just like that. Uh, when going back together with this, um, you'll notice sometimes it's really hard to get your socket back out when you put a new plug. Um, pair of needle nose, but I just grab, kind of gently wiggle. And get each piece out. That number two spot was really hard to get my socket back out. I have one of these little claws. I just reached down there grabbed it and then pulled this way so it pulled tight and popped it out so um, magnet didn't seem to want to work either so something to be aware of maybe buy one of these I'm gonna try to talk loud over the grinding in the background so all the new spark plugs are in on this pet, uh, driver's side they're all torqued um, now we're going to go ahead and put our coils back in. If you have any dielectric grease, you don't necessarily need it, but it is a good thing. I believe I have some out my uh, toolbox outside, but we're going to put some dielectric grease inside each one of these boots here. And then we're going to go ahead and reverse procedure. We're going to reinstall those. Just want to go snug on these things. You don't got to go super tight. And when you plug in your connector, you want to ensure that you push on the connector, not the gray tab. If, if you push the gray tab in too early, it'll make it really difficult to click the electrical connector on. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. So you want to push the black part of the connector on first then lock the tab once you have it on so show you an example of that so on this next coil so get your wire lined up nice and straight okay see it's starting to go in there so I can get a better light for you guys right. so you want to push on just the black housing you hear it click and then lock double check it make sure it can't pull off and that's what you want to do all right, all the coils are back in. We're gonna go ahead and put this uh, shield back on. So it looks like there's a pin there and a pin there when you get it down. So that's that's what actually holds it in. And that looks like it goes straight down. So I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna rotate it in like we pulled it out. Pull our uh, gas cap, or sorry, oil cap off. Sure, yeah. Evap purge solenoid, I should say. And make sure to get down past that. Get past these lines in the rear here. There we go. Under 
there is a those little pins I showed you. I don't know if I figure out where exactly those are. Sit down. There it goes. I felt it click in. All right. There you guys go. There's the hard, what I consider the hard side. That's back in place. We're going to plug our coolant lines back in. One, two, double check. Good. Our fuel lines. One, two, double check. Good. One, two. There you guys go. Fuel lines are back in. Cover is in its proper spot. like that there we go okay so there you guys go if you put your hand flat down the side when you get it in place you'll kind of push and you'll feel those little uh, ball press spots kind of click in so let's move on to the passenger side Okay, so the passenger side is the exact same as the driver's side. This side's actually a little bit easier to get to, so it should move along a little faster. Maybe I'll just do this one on time lapse for you guys. Um, oh, just to mention, so this was the what I was talking about earlier, putting a drop of this dielectric grease inside those coils. If you have some, you can get it at a AutoZone or wherever. Um, the only difference on this side, see this is your harness. Um, is kind of in the way so you're going to if you see here i have this stretched downwards towards the bottom of the car you just get that little tab oops little tab push down lift up and then it'll slide towards you you can do that on all four of those to help get that harness out of the way Okay, on this particular cover, uh, we got all the spark plugs in there, everything in there. This particular cover, this sits on the bottom of the high pressure fuel rail, so it's got to be tucked in. That's what holds the bottom. So, and then we have one of those pins up here. Yes. 
down kind of where roughly where it's supposed to be. Flat hand it down there. It should kind of do it stretch itself over where it needs to go. Uh, let's see this one is needs to go over this harness like that. And so There you guys go, just like that. This will come up. There is right there. You can see that right there is where that push pin is. I just want to make sure this goes down under that high pressure line. I'm push it down. And it clips over the wiring harness like so. And that's how that one should sit, guys. So, I'm going to pull this, put this here, make sure that's locked, that's where it's supposed to be. Um, I already put that cover on, I really didn't need to pull these off, I was thinking that maybe there would be some access for these panels here, but they don't need to come off. Um, something to be aware of, this, I did move some of this around, um, there's a clip down here on this hose. That Flip to this PCB breather just to help vibrations and hold them there. Let me see if I can get in there. Okay, there's right there. So that's supposed to go like that. Now to hold all that in place, there and there. That's back where it needs to be. Move our tool. All of our tools. All right. Okay. Now we're going to put this back on. So, there. Right there. Okay. Jaguar cover. Inside there. And then make sure you get it to flick in all the corners, guys. I'm gonna check the other side one more time. That one's holding. All right, you guys, and there you go. Now, one thing to remember is we did take some coolant out of this thing, very, very little, but I'm gonna go ahead and just double check mine. That is your, your bleeder, your burp area. So I'm gonna get this running, and I'm just gonna burp it, make sure there's no air trapped in that cooling system, and that is a job well done.